things are about to get ugly. <laughs> Having kids changes everything for a couple. I should know, I've got four of them myself. But these changes, they don't have to be a bad thing. In fact, they can be wonderful. So let me show you how to manage the good, the bad, and the ugly of changing as a couple when you have kids. There's five key pieces when I look at the good of having kids, especially for couples who are just getting into it and figuring it out. Number one, you're going to have more bonding experiences. You're going to be holding the kids. You're going to be enjoying it. You're going to have that time as a family snuggling the two of you holding your new baby or the two of you holding your two babies, whatever it's going to be. There's a lot more bonding that happens. It's fun. It's great. When you manage it right, you can get a flood of good chemicals in, in your brain for all of you. This is a tremendous boost. We are meant to be in family units. Humans were social creatures. Look at every animal that is like us, the chimpanzees, the bonobo chimps. They, they connect, they bond. They're meant to be healthy in big social groups. So having kids is actually can be very good for your brain. And number two, your family is bigger. This is helpful. Well, it will be down the line. <laughs> It is helpful because your family has now grown. As your family gets bigger and bigger, it actually relaxes your brain because it tells you you are not a lone wolf in the forest waiting to get eaten by a tiger. Your brain is saying, wait, we are a good family. We're a big family. Having a bunch of kids, it can increase that effect. Or having your, your siblings have kids. As your network expands, the brain likes it, right? Safety in numbers. Maybe not the moment the child is born and they're, they're too small to do anything, but it does add up over time. Number three it gives you purpose. It gives you meaning. It gives you a drive to get out of bed. Sometimes you have to get out of bed at two in the morning, but it gives you something to get up and do. You can't just sit there and do nothing and then say, man, I've wasted a whole year. Nope. You spent one year raising a child and even whatever else you do, that at least was productive. It gives you purpose. And sometimes, sometimes it lights a fire under your butt. A lot of guys turn into real men when they have a child to take care of, a family to provide for. It's not, it's not always a magic ingredient, but it can be. It can be a catalyst for men who are ready and for women too. Number four, as a couple, you now have a direct goal. Not just get this child to adulthood, make sure they survive, get them into adulthood. Help them to be an honest, loving, healthy adult. Help them to grow in the ways they're supposed to grow. Give them a great adulthood. Give them a great life up to the age of 50, 60, 70. Help them set up if they want to have grandkids. Help them set up financially. You as a couple, you now have something you can unify around instead of, hey, what should we do? I don't know. You go do your own thing. You got to work as a team to do this. And, and it's a built-in plan. It's fantastic. And the fifth good thing to remember about kids and the ways that it will change your couplehood for good is that things will get better as the kids get older. You will have loving adults, hopefully, as long as you follow everything on my channel. <laughs> it's a shameless self-plug. Follow everything on my channel, build healthy attachment, build good relationships, and everything will get better as your kids get older because they can interact more. They can talk more. They can share with you more. They can bring things to you to experience. You can experience them together. You get to experience your childhood things all over again and then young adulthood things and experience things through their eyes. It gets better and better as those kids get older. Yes, it's hard at the start. Well, we'll talk about that. But it gets so much better as things go on. The, the great, the good definitely outweighs the bad. But let's talk about the bad. Let's talk about the four big pieces that you need to be re you need to have in your mind. What is the bad? What is the difficult? And how does it impact a couple? Number one, you're going to be tired. <laughs> There's a reason that people don't drink coffee off of it until they have kids and all of a sudden it's two pots a day. You are tired. Kids pee the bed. Kids wake up crying. Kids don't want to go to sleep. Kids, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes they drag you up out of bed at 430 in the morning because it's time to color and play. You will be tired. You will be tired. Your partner will be tired. You guys are going to be exhausted sometimes. And I'm not going to lie to you about that. Sometimes you are just run ragged with kids. Number two, stress. You will be stressed. Along with that deeper purpose and a bigger family comes more mouths to feed. It comes keeping them alive. Kids seem designed to find things that could kill them. And you got to follow them around and try to keep this little self-destructing robot alive. And that could be stressful. Meeting all their needs can be stressful. Figuring out who's going to get which need met can be stressful. There's a lot of stress when you have kids. Number three, there are more chores. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but houses with kids in them tend to be messy. 
especially as the kids get row up into that childhood age, then they start pulling out toys and making messes. They don't realize how to clean up. There's food everywhere. You'll go to someone's house and look up. And there's spaghetti on the ceiling. Kids bring chores. Kids bring a lot of work. It is a lot of work having kids. And number four, the money cost. You as a couple, if you're used to flying around, going to the Caribbean and enjoying luxury vacations and such, odds are good. You probably will have to tailor that down a little bit. You'll have to curtail your, your, your financial spending because kids are expensive. The costs are going up. It's something like, what is it, a million dollars for each child now from childhood to age 18? It's a lot. It is a lot. It's worth it, but it costs a lot of money. And that means a lot of work too. Now the good, the bad, now the ugly three main pieces, three ugly pieces that threaten couples when this happens. Number one is the fighting. Fighting over who did what, who said what. The kids fighting with each other, the kids fighting with you, you fighting with your spouse because you're so tired, you're so stressed out. You fight. You fight and you argue and you say things you shouldn't say and you will say, where did that come from? And then you will say, wow, that is something my dad used to say. How did that even come out of my mouth? It's difficult. There is definitely fighting. And along with the fighting comes the end of fighting, the resentment, the argue, the, the just silent burning. How could they do this to me? I have done all these chores. Why aren't they helping? Why don't they take me seriously? Why aren't they? Why aren't they? Why aren't they over and over and over? My role is so hard. No one is paying attention. Unmet needs. This can be a lot of couples. It's, it's sex drive and physical intimacy starts drying up and how dare they? I can't. I'm living without it and I'm all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff can boil up into resentment. And number three, fearing for your family, being afraid all the time. What's going to happen with my kids? What kind of world are they going into? When is this war starting? Is it going to be over by the time they might have to go fight in it? Could we all get bombed? What if food costs go too high? What if, how am I going to feed my kids? What if we get divorced? What if, all the fear, the fighting and anger, the fear, the resentment, very ugly. There are very ugly parts for couples having kids. So what do you do? Let's talk about how to fix it. I'm going to teach you how to manage this because I've gone through four kids with my wife and we have survived with very little attempted murders. <laughs> no, we're, we're doing great. And we're doing great because we manage these things carefully. We're aware of them and we take care of them. Let me show you how. There are five key pieces you need to remember to manage the good, the bad, and the ugly. And yeah, the good needs to be managed too. Otherwise, it can spiral out of control and become stressful. Let's talk about this. Number one, you need weekly check-ins daily. Sometimes if you're in a rough patch, daily check-ins at the end of the day or at the lunchtime, but at least weekly, at least weekly. When my wife and I had our very first child, we said, we need to get this on track because otherwise this is going to get away from us. So we said, all right, every Sunday we're going to go out and we'll leave the baby in his, in his uh, car seat. And we are going to have a meeting and he'll just sleep in his car seat or we'll hold them, whatever we need to do. We'll sit at a restaurant. We will have a discussion about how we are doing as human beings. And we did that. And we also did daily check-ins at lunchtime. How are you doing? How are you doing right now? Is there anything I can do for you right now? I've got 20 minutes free. Is there anything I can do to help you with stress right now? Anything I can do. And then we'll do that back and forth. And we're still doing that. We've been, been married for 13 and a half years. We have four kids. We still, lunchtime, wait a minute. What can I do for you? Where are you at right now? How's your stress level? Can, is there anything I can do to help you today? Anything you need from me in the next couple of days? Check in, lunchtime, dinner time, just as basic human beings, check in. The check-ins, the meetings, discussing things, all of that's going to make everything else easier. But actually stop and ask the question, how are you doing? And then look at them really and say, how are you really doing? Is there anything I can do to help? Big time. Number two, define your roles. Be very clear about what your roles are. I don't care if those are traditional gender roles or, or what they are. A lot of couples gravitate toward the traditional gender roles because they often make a lot of biological and psychological sense for people who are neurotypical. If you're a different couple, if you're whatever you're going to be doing, I don't care. Define the roles. Who is doing what and when? And when are you both doing those tasks together? And when is it individual? Get that done. 
Is one of you earning most of the money, all of the money? Is the other one on support role? Is the other one taking care of it? What, what things need to be done? Who's cooking? Who's cleaning? And when? And who's taking out the trash? Be very clear. Even who's taking out the trash? Define every task. Don't leave it because there will be patches where one person will be really stressed and they won't be thinking about it. And the other person will be doing all of it and holding up the slack and become resentful. Define everything. Define every role of who's doing what and then stay within those roles. And then during those check-ins, ask how they're going. Is this too much? Did you take on too much on your plate? Is there anything I need to take from you? Even for a week or so, anything that we can do. Talk about those roles, revisit them, adapt, change as your circumstance change. And number three, during those meetings or in, in between, ask for help. Don't be a hero. You're not Rambo. You're not an army of one. Don't just settle down into I'm the martyr here and no one no, no one needs to do this. I'll just do it. My partner can't afford it. Really ask for help. And it doesn't have to be, hey, I need this help immediately. Say, hey, you know, I, this is getting a lot. I'm not sure what to do about it. Can, can you please help me figure this out? Even if it's that, figuring it out together, working as a team, building that together. Ask for help. Don't be silent. Don't boil with resentment because that will harm your children and harm your family. Ask for help. Even if you think you're not going to be heard, ask anyway. Ask anyway. Number four, people talk a lot about this, but it needs to be said because you forget. Take time as a couple. Take time as a couple. If you can do that every night, if you have one child, this can be easier than five children, five kids. If you can do a little bit every night for an hour of sitting together, watching a movie, talking, enjoying physical intimacy, it can be tough as a couple to remember that you're a couple especially young moms, often are so focused on being the perfect mom that they forget to also be a wife. Husbands are so focused on taking care of her as a mother that they forget that she needs to feel like a wife. There are all kinds of things that happen. Husbands' needs go unmet. Everything, everything can happen in this relationship. Take time. Remember that you're a couple. Meet each other's needs. Get your needs met. This could be anything. If date nights are, are harder because you can't get a babysitter, have a picnic on the living room floor. A little candlelit picnic, living room floor, have romance brought to you. There's, what is it, Uber Eats and everything out there right now. Order a pasta dinner with some salad and breadsticks and a nice little blanket on the living room floor. Not, not in the bedroom, but living room floor. Somewhere unusual. Enjoy a romantic date if you can't get a babysitter. If you can drop them off for two hours, one hour, with grandma or, or whatever, go out, make a purpose, do it, be intentional. Don't say, uh, we'll get back to that. Eh, I don't no, do it or as early as possible, as early as possible. You don't have to be going full physical intimacy if there's medical concerns, but remember that you're a couple and hold on to that because that is going to sustain the family for a long time. The heart of the family is the marriage that is holding that family intact. Remember that your kids are growing up inside this marriage too. Your marriage needs to be strong for them. And number five, it's very much like some of these others, but you have to roll all of this together, is remember that you are a team, not individuals. You are not two individuals. You are a team. You are working together. You need to be working together. Stay on top of that. Work as a team. That means treating each other respect with respect, uh, working together to solve tasks, not doing them separately, not staying silent, having meetings and, and like a normal team would at any business or any kind of structure or organization at all. Communication, asking for help, defining those roles, taking time to remember that you're a team. All of that work as a team. Don't work individually. That's that's way too much, way too much. So do these five things and you will manage the good, the bad, and the ugly. This has been helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe. I have so many resources on this channel for you for how to bond as a couple. I've got date night suggestions if you're not sure what to do there, how to bond with your kids, how to bond as a family, how to bond as you grow up, how to assess for problems if there's any issues going on. I've got all that on this channel. So make sure you follow and subscribe. Thank you.